Georgia. On November 16, 2020, on Trump's behalf, his executive assistant sent co-conspirator three and others a document containing bullet points critical of a certain voting machine company writing, see attached, please include as is or almost as is in lawsuit. Co-conspirator three responded nine minutes later writing in all caps, it must go in all suits in Georgia and Pennsylvania immediately with a fraud claim that requires the entire election to be set aside in those states and machines impounded for nonpartisan professional inspection. On November 25th, co-conspirator three filed a lawsuit against the governor of Georgia, falsely alleging massive election fraud accomplished through the voting machine company's election software and hardware. Before the lawsuit was even filed, Trump retweeted a post promoting it. Trump did this despite the fact that when he had discussed co-conspirator three's far-fetched public claims regarding the voting machine company in private with advisors, Trump had conceded that they were unsupported and that co-conspirator three sounded crazy. Co-conspirator three's Georgia lawsuit was dismissed on December 7th. On December 3rd, co-conspirator 1 orchestrated a presentation to a judiciary subcommittee of the Georgia State Senate with the intention of misleading state senators into blocking the ascertainment of legitimate electors. During the presentation, an agent of Trump and co-conspirator 1 falsely claimed that more than 10,000 dead people voted in Georgia. That afternoon, a senior advisor to Trump told Trump's chief of staff through text message. Just an FYI, a campaign lawyer and his team verified that the 10,000 plus supposedly dead people voting in Georgia is not accurate. It is alleged in co-conspirators one's hearing today. The senior advisor clarified that he believed that the actual number was 12. Another agent of Trump and co-conspirators one played a misleading excerpt of a video recording of ballot counting at the State Farms Arena in Atlanta and insinuated that it showed the election workers counting suitcases of illegal ballots. Co-conspirators too encouraged the legislators to decertify the state's legitimate electors based on false allegations of election fraud. Also, on December 3rd, Trump issued a tweet amplifying the knowingly false claims made in co-conspirators one presentation in Georgia. Wow, blockbuster testimony taking place right now in Georgia. Ballot stuffing by Dems when Republicans were forced to leave the large counting room. Plenty more coming, but this alone leads to an easy win of the state. On December 4th, the Georgia Secretary of State's Chief Operating Officer debunked the claims made co-conspirator one's presentation the previous day, issuing a tweet stating, the 90-second video of election workers at State Farm Arena purporting to show fraud was watched in its entirety, hours, by at Georgia Secretary of State investigators, shows normal ballot processing. Here's the fact check on it. On December 7th, he reiterated during a press conference that the claim that there had been misconduct at the State Farm Arena was false. On December 8th, Trump called the Georgia Attorney General to pressure him to support an election fraud lawsuit filed in the Supreme Court by another state's attorney general. The attorney general told Trump that the officials had investigated various claims of election fraud in the state, and they were not seeing evidence to support them. Also on December 8th, a senior campaign advisor who spoke with Trump on a daily basis had informed him on multiple occasions that various fraud claims were untrue express frustrations, that many of co-conspirator one and his legal team's claims could not be substantiated. As early as mid-November, for instance, 
the senior campaign advisor had informed Trump that his claims of a large number of dead voters in Georgia were untrue. With respect to the persistent false claim regarding the State Farm Arena, on December 8th, the senior campaign advisor wrote in an email, when our research and campaign legal team can't back up claims made by our elite strike force legal team, you can see why we're 0 and 32 in our cases. I'll obviously hustle to help on all fronts, but it's tough to own any of this when it's all just conspiracy shit beamed down from the mothership. On December 10th, four days before Biden's validly ascertained electors were scheduled to cast votes and send them to Congress, co-conspirator one appeared at a hearing before the Georgia House of Representatives Government Affairs Committee. Co-conspirator one played the State Farm Arena video again and falsely claimed that it showed voter fraud right in front of people's eyes and was the tip of the iceberg. Then he cited two election workers by name, baselessly calling them of quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they were vials of heroin or co cocaine, and suggested that they were criminals whose places of work, their homes, should have been searched for evidence of ballots, for evidence of USB ports, for evidence of voter fraud. Thereafter, the two election workers received numerous death threats. On December 15th, Trump summoned the incoming acting attorney general, the incoming acting deputy attorney general, and others to the Oval Office to discuss the allegations of election fraud. During the meeting, the Justice Department officials specifically refuted Trump's claims about the State Farm Arena, explaining to him that the activity shown on the tape co-conspirator one had used was benign. On December 23rd, the day after Trump's chief of staff personally observed the signature verification process at the Cobb County Civic Center and notified Trump that the state election officials were, quote, conducting themselves in an exemplary fashion, end quote, and would find fraud if it existed. Trump tweeted that the Georgia officials administering the signature verification process were trying to hide evidence of the election fraud and were, quote, terrible people, end quote. In a phone call on December 27th, Trump spoke with the acting attorney general and acting deputy attorney general. During the call, Trump again pressed the unfounded claims regarding State Farm Arena, and the two top Justice Department officials again rebuted the allegations, telling him that the Justice Department had reviewed videotapes and interviewed witnesses and had not identified any suspicious content. On December 31st, Trump signed a verification affirming false election fraud allegations made on his behalf in a lawsuit filed in his name against the Georgia governor. In advance of the filing, co-conspirator two, who was advising Trump on the lawsuit, acknowledged in an email that he and Trump had, since signing a previous verification, been made aware that some of the allegations and evidence proffered by the experts has been inaccurate, and that signing a new affirmation with that knowledge and incorporation by reference would not be accurate. Trump and co-conspirator two caused Trump's signed verification to be filed nonetheless. On January 2nd, four days before Congress's certification proceeding, Trump and others called Georgia Secretary of State. During the call, Trump lied to the Georgia Secretary of State to induce him to alter Georgia's popular vote count and call into question the validity of the Biden electors' votes which had been transmitted to Congress weeks before, including as follows. Trump raised allegations regarding the State Farm Arena video and repeatedly disparaged one of the same election workers that the co conspirator one had maligned on December 10th, using her name almost 20 times and falsely referring to her as a professional vote scammer and hustler. In response, the Georgia Secretary of State refuted this. You're talking about the State Farm video, and I think it's extremely unfortunate that co-conspirator one or his people, they sliced and diced that video and took it out of context. When the Georgia Secretary of State then offered a link to a video that would disprove co-conspirator one's claims, Trump responded, I don't care about a link. I don't need it. I have a much, I have a much better link. 
Trump asked about rumors that paper ballots cast in the election were being destroyed, and the Georgia Secretary of State's counsel explained to him that the claim had been investigated and was not true. Trump claimed that 5,000 dead people voted in Georgia, causing the Georgia Secretary of State to respond, well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. The actual number were two. Two. Two people that were dead that voted. And so your information's wrong. That was two. Trump claimed that thousands of out-of-state voters had cast ballots in Georgia's election, which the Georgia Secretary of State's counsel refuted, explaining, we've been going through each of those as well. And those numbers that we've got, that your counsel was just saying, they're not accurate. Everyone we've been through are people that lived in Georgia, moved to a different state, but then moved back to Georgia legitimately. They moved back in years ago. This was not like something just before the election. In response to multiple other of Trump's allegations, the Georgia Secretary of State's counsel told Trump that the Georgia Bureau of Investigation was examining all such claims and finding no merit to them. Trump said that he needed to find 11,780 votes and insinuated that the Georgia Secretary of State and his counsel could be subject to criminal prosecution if they failed to find election fraud as he demanded, stating, and you're going to find that they are, which is totally illegal. It's, it's, it's more illegal for you than it is for them because you know what they did and you're not reporting it. That's a criminal, you know, that's a criminal offense. And, you know, you can't let that happen. That's a big risk to you and to your counsel, your lawyer. The next day, on January 3rd, Trump falsely claimed that the Georgia Secretary of State had not addressed Trump's allegations, publicly stating that the Georgia Secretary of State was unwilling or unable to answer questions such as the ballots under the table scam, ballot destruction, out-of-state voters, dead voters, and more. He has no clue. On January 6, Trump publicly repeated the knowingly false insinuation that more than 10,300 dead people had voted in Georgia.